So uh, it's the last lecture of the semester. Uh, I will continue the propaganda to random subgroups or invariant random subgroups. So for me, the main motivation to study this is the application for lattices. What I do? And just shut down the TV with a bit. Ah, but it's still it's good. Good. Ah, no. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the main motivation uh, is the application to lattices. So we've seen uh, that lattices are uh, important objects and. Um, uh, and there is this uh, philosophy that uh, randomness sometimes helps us to prove results that uh, we can uh, see directly when looking on a deterministic objects. So sometimes we consider them as random objects, uh, we can prove uh, things. So last time, last week, uh, I gave an example of a very straightforward proof for Krishna Margulis theorem that. Uh, Every lattice can be conjugated to intersect trivially in identical neighborhoods, so which in particular implies the minimal, the, the lower bound for the co volume of lattices. And uh, the proof was very uh, short and uh, it and relied on the um, notion of invariant random subgroup uh, when considering lattices as a special point in the space of invariant random subgroups. Uh, so, so it's already shows that uh, this approach is good, but uh, but this was that was known before and there were other proofs, the original proof and the, another geometric proof by Cuomo. Uh, so today I want to show some uh, some new results which was not known this before, uh, before uh, people started to look at invariant animation. But still it's a result about lattices or in fact asymptotic uh, invariant of lattices, and um, so so that is that is already I think a, a strong motivation to uh, to open for this object. So uh, let me just recall. So G is a locally composed group. Uh, and then we have sub G. In the space of a closed subgroup, uh, closed subgroups of G, and uh, there is a topology. Uh, I Why? 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 Topology, topology, which make it a compact space, uh, so it's already something good, uh, but uh, quite complicated usually. And uh, G acts on this uh, by conjugation. And uh, by definition, an IRS is a gene variant probability measure for real regular probability measure on the space. And uh, we mentioned that the Iraq mass corresponds to normal subgroups and the, every lattice gives you an IRS which is supported on the conjugacy class of the lattice or besides on the closure of the conjugacy class and uh, so so in a sense the notion of IRS generalized lattices and and uh, the normal subgroups uh, and uh, then we consider the space of all IRS of G uh, okay, so that's a that's a space. 
the probability measure on sub G, which are uh, G. Space of uh, IRSs, and there is uh, the weak start of collision. So it's again a compact space. On this space, G doesn't act, but uh, it's a compact space associated to G. And uh, analyzing this space uh, um, has some profit. So, in particular, uh, we seen that uh, last week that from a very uh, mild information about the space for when G is a semi simple equal, we deduce the Kirchner Margulis theorem. So, and weak starter point, you mean that for every function, a sequence converging? Yes, that's, functions that's the natural topology. When you have a, when you have a, the space of, a, when you have a compact, let's say, house of space, um, so if you have, to, so just uh, recall that, recall that uh, if, if uh, X is compact, house of, Uh, and then you have C of X is the space of continuous function with the uh, uh, infinity norm. That's a binary space associated to X. Uh, it's actually an algebra even, a multiple, for the we don't care. So, and then the dual, uh, see if it's dual uh, in the space of a uh, um, point where we're walking over the rails. So, this is the space of a sign uh, measure. So, of course, every measure will give you functional on, on, on middle function by integration. And that's a all the, that's a risk representation too. And uh, so, if you want the probability, the space of all probabilities measure on X, uh, sit uh, as a convex closed subset of the unit ball of uh, C of X, and. Uh, it's inside and it's closed convex. And therefore, by a Banach, by Banach and Uglo theorem, uh, it's compact. So the probability of X uh, is W star comp. And let me just recall what is the a uh, weak star topology, uh, a functional, a sequence of functional converge to a limit functional if, or, or, or the net of functional converge to a limit functional if whenever you evaluate it on a, on, on a vector in the original space, um, they converge. And in, in our case, a sequence of measure converge to a limit measure if well, for every fixed continuous function when you integrate uh, get it. Okay, so that's the that's the weak start topology of the space of environmental Sabo, which is a compact space associated to G, but it's not a G space, G doesn't act on it. Uh, but still we want to ana analyze it and um, and then we we've seen some result in the case that G is a semi-simple level. Okay. Yes. When when your group is second countable, then this is the tricycle. Everything is a tricycle thing, or you need some. When G is second countable, yes. Uh, um, yeah, that's that's probably enough. So so uh, uh, now. Um, Let's see. Yeah, no, CSCX is separable. It's fine. 
six is separable, so then the quantity is generated by the time of the time. Why is why is the Chabot? No, so the, the Chabot space is metrizable. So so here is a metric. So you can define so if H1 and H2 are inside a closed subgroup, uh, close subgroup, so you can define the distance between H1 and H2 to be uh, the integral. Uh, of the house of distance between uh, the intersection of H1 with the ball uh, around the identity of G of R and the intersection of H2 with the same ball. Uh, and then you want to do converge, so you multiply by some function. And uh, so this gives you a metric on the traumatic approach. So, so the traumatic approach is metrizable uh, whenever G is metrizable. Nice. So, uh, so uh, yeah, and a local compact group is metrizable if and only if it is the uh, yes. first term. Yeah. But here you also want it to be proper. So, uh, you want, um, I think, anyhow. If it's uh, if G is sigma compact, uh, yeah, I know some precondition. Uh, yeah, yeah, so in house of distance, everybody know what is the house of distance? No, yeah, I'm not sure. So, yeah, so let, let me just uh, define the house of distance because we did it for later today. So, the house of distance, uh, actually, I, I will get to it really soon. So, uh, uh, so last time we've seen that in the case uh, when G is a semi-simple link group, we have several results. So first, uh, we've seen that uh, the point G inside sub G is isolated. So this is not the case with it for R. You can approximate R by the discrete subgroup. Uh, but in same simple legal, you cannot approximate. So you can somehow throw it out of the space and consider all, all other subgroups. So it's still a compact uh, space. Uh, we, also, we also saw that uh, uh, every IRS uh, With no atom at uh, G, so the probability to pick G is zero, the point C uh, is discrete. IE uh, supported on discrete uh, subgroup or, or with probability one. The a random subgroup. So this the subset of discrete subgroup inside uh, sub G is not compact, it's not closed, but it is open in the case where G is illegal. Uh, so it's measurable. Uh, and uh, every IRS gives measure one. To that space, unless it has an atom in it. So that's a uh, that's what we saw last time. Uh, so if you want, we call this uh, Borel density theorem. Um, it's actually application of Borel density theorem. But okay. <coughs> Uh, yeah, if you want, you can say that every IRS is supported on discrete the risky dense sub. So the only way to be non discrete is if you have an atom in G, and the only way to be not the risky dense if you have an atom central sub. If the, cent in the center is if the center is trivial, so if I ask, 
either the state or the students. I mean, okay, let me let me let me be more precise. So so let me take the Borel density theorem. Analysis. Uh, let G be uh, let's let's say ad, adjoint which means center three. Adjoint means that it doesn't have center. Yeah, maybe simple. Let's say simple. You can figure out what is the statement for semi simple. In semi simple, the, the only difference is that you have Dirac mass, more Dirac mass because you have more normal subgroup, but only a few more. If you have two factors, then so when G is simple, it's the only normal subgroup are the trivial in G. When you have more factors, then every factor is also long term. Um, so we'll let G the center of the semi simple label. Uh, let uh, mu be an, okay, be an IRS. Uh, okay, actually I can say then mu is, a, is the following, is, is a, if you want alpha times Iraq and the identity. Plus beta times Dirac from G plus a, a gamma times a U prime alpha plus beta plus gamma is one, that's a coefficient, and a, a mu prime is supported. On discrete and it's the dense okay that's the theory so when when your iris comes from a lattice it says that the lattice is then, then every lattice Course is discrete and, and in particular, and it says it's accidents. That's the original well density theorem. The original well density theorem is about lattice. Every lattice is directed. So, here, so this is more like a structure theorem for IRSs on the simple If you want, but uh, yeah. If it you so, so, you're basically saying that um, I don't know about extremal, but uh, every IRS is composed of. Trivial, the whole group, and like that is ah, discrete the risky dense is not necessarily a lattice. So, yeah, the discrete the risky dense is not, yeah. risky dense is not, not necessarily a lattice. For instance, it can be a normal subgroup in a lattice. Mm -hmm. um, can you give an example of an IRS which is not supported in lattice? Yes, so yeah, yeah. okay, let's see. Uh, but let's first discuss a bit this theorem. So the original Borel density theorem was just about lattices, and it says that every lattice is a risky dense. Uh, Borel gave a, a, a like a, a bit complicated proof. So uh, it, it's valuable. There are many ideas there, but a year later, Fürstenberg gave a much shorter proof, and uh, basically, Fürstenberg proof is what I did last time. It's uh, relied on what is called Fürstenberg lemma that uh, that uh, on the projective space you don't have uh, mobility measure that are invariant under a non-compact irreducible subgroup, strongly irreducible subgroup. So then it's an elementary lemma, and it implies that. And uh, the, why it implies that? Because uh, in order to show that. Uh, an IRS is supported on discrete group, 
you take uh, a random group, you take its Lie algebra, uh, a random group in, in the closed subgroup, so by Cartan theorem, every closed subgroup of a Lie group is a Lie group, it has a Lie algebra. The Lie algebra is trivial if and only if the group is discrete, and otherwise it's not trivial, and then if it's not trivial, you get a measure on the Grassmann variety inside a projective space, and by Fritz and Lemma, that is impossible. And uh, but we did last time, and uh, in the same by this exactly the same reasoning, you get that uh, it's supported on the Ritsky dense group because instead of taking the Lie algebra of the random group, take the Lie algebra of the Zurich oh. flow zone of the random group. And uh, okay. so, so that's basically the proof of that theorem. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you have to show some small lemma that you don't have IRS that's supported on finite subgroups because, uh, yeah, the risky closure is not real, it's, it has the non trivial algebra. Uh, yeah, that's Borel density theorem. So, example. So, okay, let's. Uh, let uh, G be SL2R. And, uh, and let's first start with gamma B lattice. So let gamma B, if you want, uh, SL2Z. So the reason I, you know that the reason IRS supported on the conjugate class SL2Z, we've seen how every lattice goes on to an IRS. Um, and let uh, N be a normal subgroup of gamma. So you can push the measure from G mod gamma to the conjugate class of N. So you have a map from G mod gamma to N uh, G. Uh, sending the cross of G gamma to the conjugate G and G in. Since N is normal subgroup in gamma, this is well defined. So push, pushing uh, the measure, the probability measure. Pushing the characteristic subgroup. Just a minute. Of pushing the probability measure of uh, of uh, G mod gamma. G mod gamma is a unique probability measure uh, to, uh, under this map, uh, uh, gives an IRS supported on the conjugation class, the closure of the conjugation classes. Okay. Uh, and if n is a free index in gamma, and we know that there are such groups because uh, S to Z is virtually free group and uh, it has many normal subgroups. Uh, so it has a normal subgroup infinite index, so we will get such an error. So what, what did you ask about characteristics? So this n has to be so it's key dense. Yeah, uh, and, and it's yeah. Uh, unless it's unless yeah, it's a trivial unless or central. It's trivial or central yeah. Yes. Yes. So SL two is not a center free. There is a two element in the center. I could take PSL and yes. But if you say if if the index is infinity, it's no. So it's not a lattice. So it's supported in non lattice. So that's a, that's the best. That, that's a that's the simplest example of an IRS which is not supported on that. Of the Yeah. Let me give another example. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, yeah, so IRS corresponds to uh, to manifold. So okay, I, I don't know if I will have enough. To, I, I'm going much slower than I expected, than I plan to. I plan to give some propaganda for next year and improve. I wanted to prove the seven samurai theorem today, but okay, maybe after the break. So let, let's see. 
another um, how do you get an IRS? So, so, uh, <clears throat> so, okay. So here is an example of a lattice search, but it just, I want to demonstrate a point with you. So uh, let uh, sigma two be uh, against two. Uh, Surface with uh, hyperbolic So, by the uniformization theorem, every uh, genus to surface admits a, a hyperbolic metric, and therefore, there is a Riemannian, it's a compact. Uh, Again, uh, through compact sub, through sub surface, and then there is a you can normalize the Riemannian measure uh, to be one. Normalize the measure to be one. On the time on the unit tangent. Unit tangent uh, boundary. What does it mean? It means that I have a, a probability measure, which, uh, okay, the Riemannian structure gives you probability measure, and, and I can choose, uh, I can choose a point and the unit vector, and uh, it gives you a probability measure to choose a point and the unit vector. So any choice, any any, ch uh, any choice of uh, of such a vector, I can take the I can start with this vector in this direction and take the developing map. Uh, I assume everybody knows some device topology here. So and if not, uh, so so believe me, uh, I, I just. Okay, but what is developing? Uh, so, so yeah, does it slow? No, no developing map is, is the way to uh, once you give uh, you start with a point, uh, you can um, there is the fundamental group. You, you you identify this point if you want. I have a model for the hyperbolic uh, hyperbolic plane, so that's H two. And uh, inside H two, I fix a point and and uh, and uh, a vector, and then I I start to so that's I think of this as the universal color of that. So um, so you see every every loop in the in the fundamental group correspond to an exometry of of H two. Yeah. So so that's. <laughs> Um, so if you want, uh, if you choose a point in a, in a, in a, in a, in a direction, it gives you an identification uh, of, uh, you can think of M of this manifold uh, as uh, eight volt gamma, and this gamma corresponds to the point. And uh, so gamma is the fundamental group so all, the fundamental group abstractly is well defined. It's a one relational group with the surface group. We understand it very well, but uh, but the way it sits inside SL two depends on the choice of the point and the direction. But don't you have directions that do not close to? Sorry. Don't you have directions that do not close to? Yeah. Irrational. No. Uh, the direction just tell me that this point. So the developing map tell me like this. So I start with some neighborhood and I identify this neighborhood with the neighborhood inside the hyperbolic plane. So this is the hyperbolic plane and, and, uh, and this is the image of, of this is how I, this is the neighborhood. And then I take another neighborhood and I, I, I do it like that. And then uh, when I, that, that's uh, this direction doesn't mean that anything about geodesic, it just means 
how I identify this neighborhood. So this point goes to the origin, the chosen origin of the hyperbolic plane, and uh, and the direction goes to the let's say the x-axis. If you choose the coordinates for the well, what is the loop that you choose? Um, I don't want to go into the theory of developing map and and by the project. But uh, but uh, so so yeah so sorry. <laughs> I let, let's let's let, let's give it with less detail so it will be easier to so so if you take H two mod gamma you get a hyperbolic manifold. If you take a conjugate of gamma you get the same manifold. So how can you relate this? So I, I, I say that two conjugate of gamma correspond to the same manifold, but from looking from a different point inside the manifold. So, so from here to get gamma, to get the fundamental group, I need also to fix a point in the manifold and also a direction. So if I have a point and a frame in dimension two, it's enough the direction. The reason you need the direction is just because you, you don't want H3, you want G. No, the direction is not important. For this, I mean, the direction is just because you don't want actually to look inside G mod K, you want to look inside the energy. No, the, the direction. Uh, okay, I, I want to think of, yeah, I want to think of gamma inside G, but uh, okay. Once you give me a, I, I fix a point in a direction, it gives me an, an, an uh, it gives me an injection of gamma inside. G. And and uh, and uh, since I have a probability measure to choose the point of the direction, it gives you a probability measure on conjugate of gamma, and this gives you an IRS that corresponds to 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 a lattice. Now the the reason I wanted to say this again, come to my course next year and I will explain everything in in full details. <laughs> and uh, the reason I want to say it is that once you think of IRS as if you want random manifold uh, it's easier to describe an IRS which is not a lot so you start uh, uh, you start with two pieces of uh, of a manifold two pieces uh, let's say two pieces uh, with the same uh, let's say the same boundary so this will be the happy piece and the sad piece uh, and uh, actually, if you know Tyson Miller theory, so so if you have a, you can you can you can take. Let, let's not make them happy and sad, but uh, let's say uh, no. Let's make them happy and sad. But uh, so so that two we call them A and B. Okay. And then, and then uh, I choose the sequence of uh, of letter infinite sequence a b a a a b b a b and so on infinite uh, sequence. And here I have some. If you want the 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 middle the zero of the sequence, and for each such sequence. I associate uh, a gluing of, uh, of like an infinite manifold. Uh, like that. Uh, so this will be A, B, and so on. So whenever I see A, I happy one and then Z, Z, uh, happy, and so on. And uh, so you see, I have. Uh, so now I have uh, the Bernoulli space of all sequences. For each point, I choose with probability half A or B. And for each point in the Bernoulli space, I can associate a manifold. And what, what, what do you think of this difference about A versus B? Or just yeah. choose any two manifolds. Ah, they just look the same. Yeah, they don't look the same. One, it's self happy said maybe uh, in one of them. So both of them will have the same genus uh, uh, because then it's easier. Ah, they have the same genus. If you want, they have the same genus. You don't have to, but you can take them with the same genus. But one of them is an extremely short geodesic, and the other doesn't. 
So, like so you can distinguish them. So if you if you if I give you at some point in the manifold, you will know if it's from that piece from that. But we want the volume to be finite. Infinite. Yeah, each of them has finite volume. No, but all together. All together, we will you will have infinite volume. So that's why it's not a lattice. But it's a but uh, the probability to get the manifold you have a probability measure to to a random manifold of infinite volume. And uh, if you look at the, the, the fundamental group point of view, for each, of, for each one you take the fundamental group, then you, you get the probability measure to choose a discrete subgroup, which is not a lattice. So that's, again, I, I, I did it too fast, so it's not with full detail. That's one way to, to choose an IRS, to, to describe an IRS, which is not supported with lattices. But still, in many sense, it's related to lattices. So if you want, yeah, I mean, if you want, for instance, uh, it's not too far from lattice. It is a weak limit of lattice. So if you want, yeah, so this IRS is cosophic, if you want. It's not a, yeah, it's not a, okay. It's an open problem. It's not known if in SL2 you have a, every every IRS is from some related to the question whether uh, so every split group can find Wait, in SL2, this, you're talking about lattices in SL2R. Yes. It's the it's same related. thing as asking about S2? It's related. It's related. It's related. It's, related. it's, not, it's not the same. Okay. Everyone in S2 gives you lattices. Every, every, uh, yeah. Yeah, but it's related, we can discuss it, but uh, okay. not now, I am having words uh, in other place. Okay, so now I want to introduce the Benjamin Schrant topology. At some point, we should have a break. Okay. Is this a good time for break? So, okay. Yeah, so let's have a 50 minutes break, and then uh, I'll introduce the Benjamin Schrant topology, uh, the geometric point of view to look at lattice at an IRSS, and uh, so, uh, when you mini shrum paint, I think of the shrum paint. No, I think of let me recall what is the house of uh, metric. So, uh, and then X, E, B, compact. Uh, or oh, not necessarily compact. Uh, proper. Let's say a compact or a metric space. Uh, and then you have two sets inside X, which are compact. So with the house of distance between them, you define to be uh, the infimum. Of, of epsilon such that uh, A is contained in the epsilon neighborhood of B, and B is contained in the epsilon neighborhood of A. Well, uh, A epsilon by definition is the union of all epsilon ball centered at A, or if you want to set of all X, X, such as the distance from X to A. That's the house of distance. And the, uh, uh, a theorem that if X is compact, then the space of all closed subsets in X with respect to that distance uh, is the compact, is again compact. 
could be quite large. For instance, if, it, if X is the unit interval, then the space of all closed subset with the house metric is the Hilbert cube in three dimensions. It's homomorphic. So it's uh, that's the house metric. Now, a Gromov household. Distance between, um, oh, 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 maybe normal distance first. Uh, normal distance. Uh, actually, I, I don't remember what the name. <laughs> So you can say that uh, if uh, x d if x and y are uh, compact matrix spaces, um, then the gram of distance. Between x and y is the infimum of the house of distance inside z of x and y over all uh, metric spaces, the metric space uh, containing admitting. And the metric focus. So this is the house of distance inside C. So I maybe I'm abusing notation a bit, but uh, I look at all spaces that I can embed X and embed Y, and then I take the house of distance inside Z, and then I take the infimum. So that happened to be a metric on the space of all compact metric spaces. So that's the distance between compact spaces. And, uh, and actually you can prove that uh, there is Z and embedding such that the distance is realized. So, so the infimum is realized, it's actually a mean. So the distance is ultra limited. Is it clear that the distance is zero if and only if they are isometric? Yeah, I don't know what clear, but it's not going to help. It's true. Yeah. So. Okay. And, and more, of it. actually, the ah, distance yeah. is realized. Mm -hmm. You can always yeah, yeah. take some ultra limit. Yeah. So that's a, that's a gram of distance. And then you can define a gram of house of distance. Uh, distance between a two and point edge. That's okay. So, normal house of distance. I take uh, now x and p and y q are pointed um, pointed um, open, not compact anymore. A metric space. So they are not compact, but the balls around P and the stand around Q are. Uh, and then actually, let me just write the formula for the metric to make it sure.
then you define the Gromov Hausdorff distance between uh, XP and YQ be the integral of uh, the global distance of uh, the ball inside X by the sound and the ball inside Y by the sound. And like we did before, you multiply it by some function became fast enough uh, so that this will go down. So for this one, uh, what would compactness or something? Is that what you meant by proper matrices? Proper means that both are compact. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so that's a uh, give you a metric on all pointed uh, metric spaces. Okay, now what is the Benjamini Schramm space? So now the Benjamini Schramm space Benjamini uh, Schramm space. So the Shibuti metric is the goal of how to move the density. Right. So it's exact. So the distance is in subgroups is exactly that. Let me Let me go. The Benjamin Schramm space is the space uh, of all probability measures on a, on the space on the huge space. of proper uh, metric space. So there is, I look at the space of all proper metric space, that's, that's actually a metric space, by, uh, but it's huge space. And I, now I consider all for really, so all way to choose a random, choose randomly. Okay, point, point. Pointed. Um, point. So. But that's that's too big somehow. So you, so that's too big, and I don't want to consider all. Can you really even define probability measure on a space if you know it's there? So what I like to do, uh, if I still want to be quite general, uh, but uh, but make things uh, better defined, or or at least uh, make things compact, uh, is uh, to bound. To, to bound the geometry. So there is a notion of bounded geometry. Uh, and if you add uh, this the assumption that you bound the geometry, but they don't want to go into it, uh, then things become compact. But let me now restrict myself even further. Uh, let X be a symmetric space. And then I define BSX to be a, the probability measure on pointed X manifold. X all before. So I look now not on all metric space, but only metric spaces. For instance, if X was H2, so I only consider surfaces, pointed surfaces. So I only consider pointed surfaces. I, I, I allow some ramification points, so I allow O before. But uh, all 
publication. It's good to look at that. And this is a compact, uh, this is this is now a compact page. And now uh, I said, okay, uh, with the weak stop, weak stop approach. So I can look at all pointed x on before with the normal house of distance. Then I get actually a compact metric space. So if you want for H2, it would be all the, the pointed surfaces, all, all the pointed surfaces. And this, for instance, this is a point in the space. The surface and the point. Now, you see, uh, it's you, better it's, if you want to be, to see that things works fine, then maybe you also want to choose a frame, a vector or a frame, and, uh, and you can do it, but you don't have to do it. It also works without a frame. So, uh, so let, let's choose a frame. So a framed, framed, uh, it's uh, obvious. So I choose, so, so, a point in my space in the Benjaminish, a point in the, in, in the, okay. So, so I, I, I skipped some step here. So I can consider, uh, let's call it M of X in the space of all frame uh, X of the ball. Now, the reason I prefer pointed on frame because I didn't define what is the distance between two framed objects? I just define the distance between two pointed objects. Yes, but you can define things, distance between frames. So we try to embed both of them inside a metric space, but in also in the right direction. So, so the, there is a way to do it. But, uh, but it, you so I don't know. A frame only at your base point? Yeah, I put a frame. I put. I choose one point and a frame, and then and then I I, I need to redefine everything like the normal distance and so on. So maybe I prefer not to say, not to talk about frame, but on pointed. And uh, and things work also with pointed. So you don't have to justify why, but uh, things work also with pointed. So that's that's my space. And, and uh, and the Benjamini Schramm space is the space of probability measure on this uh, huge space M of X. Uh, with the weak start of one. And that's a compact space. Now it's still, I want to relate it to the space of IRS. Uh, this one is still bigger than the space of IRS uh, because there is no invariance. I didn't insist anything about invariance of probability. But anyhow, how it is related. So, so okay. let's say, uh, So X is G mod K, there is some associated link group, the group of enzometries of X, which is SN2 in the case of X is H2. So suppose X is G mod K, which is a link group. Then we get a map um, we get a map uh, from discrete subgroup of X. You get a map, there is a map between a uh, discrete subgroup of X to uh, M of X. 
It's hit sum of G. And X, it sends gamma to the manifold G mod K mod gamma. Uh, okay, if you want which is X mod gamma, but that's a manifold to make it a pointed manifold, uh, uh, fix some point X zero inside X. Then uh, you get gamma goes to, to this uh, with the, if you want the image of it zero. So you get a um, gamma is sent to that and uh, x with gamma and the image of it zero projection. I get a point in many. Okay. Now, if I have an IRS, and a discrete IRS, <laughs> on G, so, so as I told you, every G is the same as in the legal sense, you see the simple equal, every IRS with no atoms and with no atoms is supported on speed subgroup. No, I'm just guessing. So the invariance condition when you look at the Pinyamini Shram, like you probably didn't wait. Let, so let me define it and then and then guess, and, and then we'll, we'll uh, then we we'll, uh, give you time to guess. But, but uh, so so you can push, push. Pushing mu to the other side in a mini sum of x, we get a measure, a probability measure on a pointed x of yes. So so that's every measure. On discrete sides, for the discrete sum of G, give you in that we put it under this map a measure on pointed X of. Okay, so yes, what is the guess? What, what is the, the we started with invariant measure, the measure was invariant under calibration. What will what will it say about the image? Invariant under change of base point. So okay, to get the invariance. Uh, you need to look not just on the pointed version that I, I but on, on the frame oh. version. So, so I said to do it more, uh, there's a better way, a more right way to do it is to choose a point and a frame and look at frame manifold. And then, but, and then you, there is a map from frame manifold to, to pointed manifold, just forget the frame. And, and you can show that uh, in the when we discuss uh, locally symmetric spaces, you can forget the frame. It, it doesn't matter. But if you discuss more general and manifold, then you can. Uh, but uh, but now, if you choose a random frame manifold, uh, what I want from the from the measure. Uh, so it will be related to IRS it, that it will be in bind under the geodesic flow. So, so here you have a, you have a frame, and now um, if you take a geodesic, uh, uh, you can choose a geodesic inside E. Okay, I, actually I don't want to go into, it, but there, there is some the, yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't want to go into this now because I you mean have... moving the frame along a geodesic, you yeah. get other points and up like frames at yeah. that point. And you... Yeah, if you want to choose, so all, all this, this manifold comes from X, so X what gamma. So if you choose a geodesic inside X, so inside X you choose some, some yeah. geodesic, and then you do it simultaneously for all the quotients together. Like choosing a geodesic is like choosing a 
element in G to conjugate. You, you choose a geodesic, and then you, there is the notion of parallel transpose yeah, around yeah. the geodesic. You can you can move the, the frame, and then you can you do it simultaneously on all quotients together. And yeah. so this push the, the measure to another measure, and it okay. was, the invariance of that mm -hmm. is what those point to. So, but I you see why I don't want to go into this. Anyhow, that gives you another way to look on invariant random subgroups, like a, a random pointed manifold. So an IRS in a SL2 is if you want a random pointed service. And uh, <clears throat> okay. Now some theory. So invariant random surfaces. Invariant random surfaces. Yeah. It's invariant. Yeah, and, and invariant now means under the geodesic uh, flow. And um, yeah, so, okay. The first theorem of, and, and I think maybe one of, maybe the most remarkable theorem about uh, invariant of Sabu is uh, the theorem by Stuck and Zimmer, uh, which actually uh, was formulated much before uh, the notion of Ivan Shabu started to discuss. Uh, so, so Stuck and Zimmer. I will not say it in the way that they did. Uh, because they didn't discuss IRSs. They discussed a stabilizer of action on open spaces, uh, which you can show it's the same thing. Uh, it's another point of view. Uh, and the theorem of Stuck and Zimmer is the following. So let G be a simple. Uh, a connected simple connected adjoint P group of free run at least three. A at least two. I am. Uh, then every discrete IRS is supposed to be lapses. So this example of uh, this random uh, infinite uh, manifold that we did in SL2R, you can do in many other cases, but only in rank one, not in higher rank. So in, in higher rank, every IRS is supported on that. Basically, yeah, that, that's a quite amazing theorem. It's, a, it's an extension of Margolis normal subgroup theorem. Um, yeah, the story that uh, the proof relied on the earlier work by Zimmer, uh, which is called the intermediate factor theorem, which is the extension of Morghulis factor theorem. But this had a mistake, and uh, some years later uh, was corrected uh, in the joint work of Amos Nebo and, and Zimmer. Uh, so, uh, so the theorem is bad. And, okay. and uh, so that, that's, that's the theorem. Um, so I'm yeah. The original, let me just, let me just state the original, uh, the original uh, formulation. Uh, so this is equivalent actually, the following formulation. So let uh, 
So every mobility measure for them with every mobility measure preserving action PM uh, action of G is either is uh, essentially or is either Essentially, so let's not write essentially, it's either a free or trans. Okay, let's assume a codic. Yeah, maybe it's every ergodic. Otherwise, you can, you can compose the two. So, what does it mean? Three means that the stabilizer are, are trivial. Stabilizer theory point is one. A transitive means that it's our transitivity to the stabilizer in the lattice. Uh, so you see, maybe you see the relation, but uh, the relation goes in both ways. Uh, every, actually every PMP action gives you an IRS because you choose a random point, the stabilizer of a random point, is the random sample. Uh, you can also go the other way and show that every IRS comes from the MPA. So, so that's actually, that's the original motivation. Uh, this was in, I think in 89 or maybe 94. I don't know why I'm going to go. It's probably one of the two. Uh, can you someone check? Stuck zero zero. Ninety four. Ninety four. Ninety four. What? Why did I see? And yeah, it's it's not good to write the, the year because it became a pure only a few years later. So um, when the point zero connected. Yeah. The graph is zero. It will be a factor. So. <clears throat> The notion of IRS was just started to became uh, so people started to study IRS and talk about IRS only in 2010, so like uh, a year ago. And uh, so yes, so, so let me now uh, describe. Uh, the results of the uh, seven summarized. Seven summarized results, or one of the results. Uh, I'll do something like that. Seven summarized QM. So, first, Uh, okay, so let G be a simple reboot, connected simple center free Frank is two. Uh, Then then the only then, then the, the space of Everybody, IRS G consists of of a uh, okay. Iraq G 
Gerak one and new gamma. New gamma is the lattice. So that's actually still the same now. And uh, the main thing is the Dirac one is the only non isolated one. Like, well, how is shown to us uh, that Delta G, Delta one? And Zavisky Borel Saku, Borel Densaku, sorry, Borel Dens, Zavisky Densaku, but you tell me that the high rank is Zavisky Densaku, so just lattices. Yes. Yeah. They are just lattices, but that's a, Delta one is the only, is the only, that's some of the main, okay. So let me, let me, let me tell you about the proof. So first, so the proof relies on open TT. Why do you want to be what? Um, what do you mean? To, there yeah, is, there is a to, a among the ergodic. Uh, okay. Uh, the space of ergodic uh, is compact. The, if you want, the fact that it's compact, it's a theorem of a, a Glasner and Weiss. Actually, uh, it's also property key, right? Yeah, that's property key. So, so, uh, Gladner Weiss, so, so remark. Gladner Weiss, still went in flat, uh, say that property key implies that the everybody IRS is closed. Uh, I'm again, so actually, when we wrote the paper, we, we first we were was not aware of that, so we we, we removed this theorem. Uh, now, Kashdan implies that G has fallen to E, so. <clears throat> So we know that G is property T, and therefore the space of fallen Godic IRX is is uh, is, uh, is closed. So there are infinitely many IRXs, infinitely many lattices, and uh, so we want to know what is the isolated point. So let me. Before pull the theorem, let me explain what it means. So it means that the, uh, the consequence of the theorem, the theorem says the theorem is equivalent the following. So if gamma n is a sequence of lattices in G. Then mu gamma n converge to Dirac identity. They must converge to some limit or subsequent because of compactness. Uh, but the only non related point is Dirac identity. So this kind of like Kashtan on this But they become more and more scarce. So it's much stronger than Kishdan or Ruiz. Kishdan or Ruiz applies also in rank one. The, does this imply Kishdan? Yeah, it's implied. And also, but much, much more. Yeah. So what does it mean? So so let's try to, to view it in the Benjamini Shram space. Let's think, uh, consider uh, the Benjamini Schramm space of uh, X, X and human K. Uh, so, 
mu gamma n corresponds to a pointed x orbital finite volume. So if you want, I have a, I have this gamma mu gamma gamma corresponds to x mod gamma with a with a random point. The gamma corresponds to x mod, mod gamma, and mu gamma corresponds to that with a random point. If you want the conjugate, the conjugate class of gamma corresponds to mu gamma to an IRS mu gamma, and uh, the, the corresponding random manifold is the same manifold but just choosing the point random. So I have a manifold, uh, to be non compact, and I choose the point randomly that corresponds to the IRS mu gamma. <coughs> Um, so it says that any sequence of random surfaces with random points converges to like a non surface. No, ah, it's, okay. it's not true in I1. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So in I1, it's not true, but in if you want, if you move to one, two, so already in SL3R, if you think of this as five dimensional object corresponding to, to, to symmetric space SL3R, then then it's, it will be true. So now, if you have a sequence, uh, if gamma n is the lattice, our lattices, then they correspond to mn, which are x orbital, very further, and, uh, and then, uh, Okay, so consider mu gamma n, and we can suppose that this converge in the weak star topology to a limb because of compactness. And, and the claim for the theorem is that mu must be the directed identity. It's equivalent. To let's say if mn converge to m, these are pointed manifold, a random pointed manifold. But uh, but I know what are the manifold. Are just the manifold with the random point. The manifold, they converge to to m to, to an IRS. But uh, yeah, so so then. M is just X. What is the, is the so you remember I, I have this uh, identification between the discrete subgroup of G to X or before to point at X or before, and to the discrete subgroup, the trivial group, I associate X mod the trivial group, which is just X. So, so the fact that the limit is the Dirac identity. It's the same as if I look at the geometric side in the point of view, that the limit is the symmetric space. And, and okay, now the symmetric space, you say, and I have to choose a random point, but uh, all the points are the same, the symmetric space, there's no difference which point. So you go back to so the first one. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it doesn't matter. Any probability in the Benjamin Schramm space, any probability you measure that you give me on the on X with, with a random point, it is giving me the same point in the Benjamin Schramm space. So really concretely it says that if I take a now, now I take a sequence of surfaces and I sample a point in them and look at the neighborhood. So Asymptotically, it looks more and more like people symmetric. Yes, yeah, yeah. And that's exactly what it says, and then that's how you prove it. Actually. So um, somehow, like 
Borel density theorem, you put it before together with stack zero already tells you that the ergodic IRSs can just be what you want. Right? That, that is kind of. Yes, so, so, yeah. it just says that we don't, we don't need density. more density. We don't need more density there. Ash, yeah. Uh, no, okay. It just says that yeah. discrete one and G, but discrete doesn't have to use the polygon latitude. No, but Stuxima said no, that. No, it, it said that it's no, I'm sorry. <clears throat> let, 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 me, let me explain. We are, we are very close to, to proving that. Okay. So, so, so here is the proof of the claim. So here is our input. Suppose, by way of contradiction, that uh, the limit is not a uh, zero. Uh, since uh, G, now the limit is ergodic. By Gladner Weiss, the limit is ergodic. So it's one of them. So it's either the Dirac on G. Uh, if it's not Dirac on one, it must be U gamma or Tamlati. Then, U is just mu gamma for like mu g because g is isolated. Ah, ah that was improved. Yes. Okay. So mu g is isolated, so it must converge to mu gamma. Okay. So let's let's draw uh, let's draw a. Uh, you are assuming stable when you can Yeah, yeah, yeah. I assume stable. <laughs> what? I mean, it's the only non-isolated point I forgot that. What do you mean? No, no yeah, this is what I want to prove. I want to prove that it's only another. So not a sonic state. No, that's not sonic state. No, Stuck Zimmer was that every IRS is either, every ergodic IRS is. Stuck Zimmer was that the Stuck Zimmer was, was the following the, the ergodic, uh, ergodic IRS of G is the following family. D, G, D1, and here we go. That's too simple. I also wrote that they were isolated except me one. And ah, no, that, that, that's, that's, already, that's already the seven sum. No, that's what, okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, if you want also this formulation of sub is also due to the seven sum, right? Um, the original is to zero just discuss probability measure preservation. So mu is mu gamma, and it corresponds to M, uh, which is x one gamma. So let's draw it. This is this is M. It may not be compact, but it is fine as well. So, so let's draw it with some cash. So this is M. Now. It's M and a random point. I choose that's the IRS correspond to M is to choose this manifold and a random point. But with positive probability, the random point will be here somewhere. Now, MN converge to M. Uh, MN is a sequence of the MN corresponds to mu n uh, converge to m in the Benjaminish one to polish. So it means that uh, here I have a positive probability to choose the point somewhere in this vicinity. So also inside m I have a positive probability to see something. So you see all this, if you have points which are close to one another, they see almost the same picture. They see m very close to one to to, to this so so if we choose a, so inside mn i also see that picture so this this will be inside mn i with positive probability it will not be isometric but almost isometric like a, some some small distortion i will see i will see such a thing inside mn this is inside MN, but I don't know how I don't know what's happened far away. You remember that in, in, in if you remember the topology, I intersect with a large ball and, and then things have to be similar. But then I also do it with larger ball, but but this uh, but oh, so some for some large ball around the point, uh, 
this thing should look uh, similar. And then it's, I claim that this is a contradiction. Why? This is contradict property D. Why? Uh, so, because inside MN, so the volume of MN goes to infinity. I understand. So the volume goes to infinity? Ah, uh, we discussed that. No, the, uh, we discussed the one theorem that uh, uh, if you bound the volume, there are only finitely many. Okay, so I believe. Yeah. So, we discussed, so, so if you have a sequence of different manifold, the volume goes to infinity. So, so inside MN, I see this picture. I see this, uh, what I draw. Uh, I see that. That's the point, the random point. But, but, uh, but you see, when I look at the large ball, suppose I look at the large ball inside the the, the limit manifold, uh, then the large ball covers almost everything, like ninety nine percent of the manifold. This this manifold has some definite volume. If I take a sufficiently large ball, I will, I will cover almost everything. But the MN is much larger than volume. The volume of MN could be twice the volume of M. So if I have, a, if I have a, the same ball, it cannot cover most of M. There must be something on the other side. This is MN. This is an MN. Because the volume, the volume of MN for large N is, is more than twice the volume of M. So I also have something on the other side. So you see, I have uh, now, if I took the ball here sufficiently large, then this was very small. It's all very intuitive. I don't uh, explain the details, but uh, the details require something. But, but you see, I you, you see what I got. I got an X manifold with two very big sides that can be separated by cutting something very small. And this is a contradiction to property. This con contradicting uh, why? So, by the way, so all of you know what is probability because okay, most of you took my course last semester, no? most analytic book theory, so you should know. Uh, <laughs> Property T is related to what is called the Chigel constant. Uh, what is I don't here in the picture is a manifold with very small Chigel constant. Chigel constant is like the expansion, expansion uh, constant. So you see, I have a I have some very small set inside the inside the manifold. Uh, it has, let's say, uh, a very small volume. And this very small set cut the manifold to two pieces. Each of them has very large volume. So the, the trigger constant is, if you want, the infimum of the, if you want, uh, let's say, <clears throat> The infimum of the volume of let's say one ball, so a ball of ball of uh, radius one. So let's suppose this one. So the, you can define it in this way. So the infimum of the volume of one ball divided by the volume of uh, of the smallest the smaller side. That it's uh, it, it's like you define expansion for graphs, and I consider this one ball as the as the, the neighborhood. If you want, <clears throat> yeah, so that's a, that's a trigger constant. And poverty T implies that a poverty T is 
implies uh, that the Chigel constant is, uh, is bounded below. Uniformly for you, all uniform motions. Uniformly for all uh, <coughs> G mod, all X mod gamma. I mean, why is that? Because, uh, okay, instead of thinking of X mod gamma, X, X is G mod K. Uh, G doesn't act on, on X mod gamma, it acts, but it acts on G mod gamma. So, but instead of X, thinking of X mod gamma, it's better to think of G mod gamma. And in G mod gamma, you see it's exactly over to T because, so suppose this is a picture not in X mod gamma, but in G mod gamma. So you see, uh, you see, uh, so this is, it, suppose you have this picture in G mod gamma. So then you can take the function which is one on this side, let's say minus one or, or zero on that side, and uh, until the middle here. So you see that this function is almost, is in L2 and is, or you normalize it, and it's almost invariant under, uh, suppose G is, G is generated by a small compact set, which moves in only to distance one when in the action. So you see that the function that I described here is almost equivalent, but it's not, it's very far from the constant function. So, so that's why it contradicts probability. Okay, all this discussion is very intuitive, but uh, <laughs> just a minute, but, but, that, but that's the idea. You see, I, I, I wanted to demonstrate. That. Okay, what was your question? Uh, uh, this picture is a very uh, rank one. And, uh, uh, and no, and it, no, but it's uh, because it's two dimensional. So I, I, I no, I know, I know, but uh, but in higher rank, you don't have a, a bot. Do you actually have a bottleneck or? Uh, so, so what? Uh, to do it precisely, you, you you have a manifold. It doesn't matter which dimension, which rank. You have a manifold, and then and you have a point, and then you look at the ball of radius uh, r around this point. It's a very large subset of the manifold. And you suppose that the, in the limit manifold, you suppose that the volume of this is, is, uh, is very loud. And, uh, and you have this. And the neck is, is, the, neck is, uh, is, the, is the ball of radius p uh, uh, r plus 1 minus the ball around p of radius r minus 3. So that's the neck. So, so it's just. This picture doesn't describe so, so it, it could be it could have many yeah, components. components, but uh, yeah, but uh, anyhow, it has this one has very small volume and this would have a big okay, so it's an expansion. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the second question is that like I would expect that uh, what once you know vo volume of MN goes to infinity, volume of M is some number, yeah. and M and B Germany Schramm converges them. So in general. It's not sure that it means that the like Benjamin Schramm doesn't volume is not a continuous. Uh, no, no, no. For instance, I, I can give you even a, a, a simpler example. So, so, for instance, in a yeah, I, I give you an example in in SL two. Uh, take uh, even finite volume example. Take Take this surface, surface is minus two. And now, uh, so it corresponds to some IRS. And now take a different surface of minus two. So, which will be like that. It will have very, very short geodesic somewhere. So, and therefore, if it has very short geodesic, the, the constant curvature will force it to be to a very large diameter. And so, so this is definite volume. The volume is, uh, I don't know, I don't know how, how do you compute it? The volume is two pi times the order characteristic or uh, minus two pi times the order characteristic. 
So it's a two G minus two. So the volume will actually fall four pi. That's the volume of that. Man. All of them is volume four pi. <clears throat> but in the limit, in the limit, you will tell this, and in the limit you will have yeah, but it's not two, it's one. Because it's the same. If you do it, you will get exactly the same manifold twice. But the limit will be just the limit will have that's the volume of the limit will be so what is the limit? The limit of the IRS, the IRS is corresponding to that one will convert. Suppose I take it symmetrically. I take it, there is a mirror series symmetry here. So this is exactly like that. And then in the limit, so if you don't, if you take it non-symmetrically, the limit will be the, the limit will be non-connected. Non-connected. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But okay. if it if it's symmetric. So the limit will you just get twice the same thing. So, but but what does it mean? It means that uh, ah, that it means that it's the same. It's just that thing. Yeah. So the limit corresponds to a volume to something of uh, finite of, volume of of, of smaller twice. volume, small smaller ah. volume. But yeah, but yeah. yeah. Ah, no. But here you don't have something of volume going to infinity. Ah, but you, you can do it also. Uh, yeah, you can do it also. Volume going to infinity. Yeah. yeah you can actually, if you want. You can do volume go to infinity, and the limit will be finite volume. Yeah. In essence, to infinity. Okay. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> uh, yes, and uh, okay, this is very intuitive, uh, but uh, but uh, what I wanted to say is that this uh, approach of uh, uh, is is okay. So, Maybe just what is the conclusion, corollary, of reformulating the theorem is if uh, we, do, we know it by f for manifold for manifold M, uh, let M R uh, be the R. Thick part. So M R M greater or equal than R in the set of all points in M where the injectivity radius at X uh, is at least R. So So the theorem is the following. So if the volume of MN goes to infinity, then the volume of MN uh, R divided by the volume of MN goes to one. So you will have smaller and smaller thin part. The thick part will the random point in a, in a manifold of large volume is very thick. It's very fat. So, so your blood in And this is enough to prove uh, many uh, asymptotic uh, results about uh, topological invariance. What, from this, you can, for instance, show that the normalized Betty number uh, converges to a limit. For anyway. And uh, so this is this is something that was studied since the eighties. There were many works about the normalized Betty number. It's related to to stuff that people like Elias Zafida are doing. Uh, uh, so so uh, to number theory and representation theory. And, and and this is very general. It's for every sequence. It's not just uh, in the past people restricted to sequence of subgroups or sequence of covers of a given manifold. And now we, this results about general, about general. Uh, uh, <clears throat> so, so you see that what I wanted to demonstrate is that this notion of invariant random subgroup can, can tell you new stuff about uh, uh, lattices that were not known before. Now, uh, can I ask what you want this? Sorry. Can I ask a question about this? Yes. What do you think the left side, this side is smaller than the right side? In volume? 
Yeah, you, you can't. can. Uh, if, you want, to if you want to have, uh, that's a Gauss Bonnet theorem. The Gauss Bonnet theorem tell you that uh, the volume and the topology is determined one another. So, so, uh, so if you want them to have different volume, you have to have topology. Okay, so suppose we do that. Yeah. One you have two, and one that you have one. Yes. It, it will have some subsequence which converge. Yeah. So, what will converge? Converge to to something like that. Ah, which is disconnected. Disconnected. So the, yeah, it's uh, disconnected, which means non ergodic So you have a sequence of ergodic ergodic uh, IRSs that converge to, to non ergodic IRSs. So it is a counter example to Glass and Weiss, but it's not because SL2 doesn't have problem. Oh. So did we say that lattice is a ergodic? Uh, I I didn't. It's true. I didn't prove. I, I I It's like yeah. Uh, so I I will prove details uh, in my next course. Uh, I have a question. That the stack zero set of ergodic IRS, discrete ergodic IRS are supported on that itself. So it's clear that it means that we you only that we are, no. It, I mean, does it mean is it clear that the only ergodic ones are IR are lattice? Sorry? You said that ergodic IRSs are supported on lattices. Is it clear that it means that the only ergodic IRSs which are discrete are actually lattices? You can like have something. Yeah. Okay. You, you have an ergodic position. Yeah. Okay. So what I want to say is the following. So now, uh, recently, this theorem was extended a bit. So. so so here is the theorem that, uh, uh, in particular, this implies corollary. Uh, um, for every R, there is V such that uh, if M has volume this V, then, uh, then uh, M admits a point of uh, inductivity radius. Or if you want, an M contains an injected ball. Uh, of values ah. uh, and uh, so this this is true this follows from that if volume m who is v right. volume m is greater than v if volume n sorry is greater than v then you have an uh, injection code. This is not true in SL2. In SL2, you can draw a manifold of very large volume and uh, bounded inductivity values. Uh, but in, uh, also in, in any rank one uh, symmetric space, you can do such example. But uh, is theorem of course is follows from? It follows, yeah, it follows from that because uh, it not just it's true not, not just that uh, it's true that you see most point you have large inductivity not just one but uh, I claim that you can erase the condition that the volume of m is finite and this is the, the new result that the uh, uh, fact you can reserve. Uh, so we proved it also without this assumption that the volume is. And for this, it was not enough to consider IRS. Because uh, IRSs, you can view lattices and IRS, as IRSs, but you cannot view general discrete groups as IRSs. So, so you, you cannot expect that there will be 
uh, in one kind of server that it's supported, that it's supported it contains, uh, suppose you, you consider a given group, you cannot, um, you cannot uh, uh, expect that this group will be in the support of some average. It's very strong to demand that something is uh, in some measure is invariant. But, uh, <clears throat> but when, instead of considering uh, invariant, kind of me invariant measure, uh, one can consider stationary measure. And stationary measure is much, much more general. It's like uh, whenever you have a, a group acting on, on yeah, of course. So, so <clears throat> if you want, it's also the, notion, the difference between considering a manifold group to general group. So uh, a manifold group, for whenever they act on some compact space, there is invariant measure. But uh, general group, usually you, you don't have invariant measure, but you always have stationary measure. I, I don't want to go too much into what it means. Uh, and therefore, it's much more general to consider stationary measure. And once you start, once you do that, it, it allows you to access many points, many, many places that consider only invariant on some uh, would not be enough. So the theory of stationary random subgroup is even newer and much less is known and there are many many problems in a sense for those of you who know what it means you can take any theorem about irs's and ask if this theorem can be generalized to stationary and so and uh, many of uh, these questions are interesting yes. so uh so that will somehow okay if you come to my course next year I will not say so much about lattices. I will just give one or two lectures just the basics about lattices and, and then start to discuss IRSs and, and stationary and subgroups and, and all the course will be about fun. So, so this course was supposed to be lattices and random subgroup, three parts, lattices, IRSs, and, and stationary random subgroup. But we spend 95% of the course on lattices, which was good, I think, because we proved Borel Richandra. I think uh, this proof by Margulis is, is really wonderful. Um, but next, so the, the title of next year, of course, would be Carl suggested that. Uh, <laughs> so, so, yeah. So this. This, uh, this, this was the title of what we planned to do, and, and we only did that. So next thing we do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, let's eat the cake. <laughs> yeah. Which samurai do you identify? <laughs> Single movie. I've seen a 